this for joining us this morning. And as we just open up our hearts and worship to God. Hallelujah. Come on, children. Hallelujah. How beautiful do our children look this morning. This is the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit have a message for the church this morning. Amen. And that message is taken from 1 Corinthians. Children, come on. Thank you. 
thought the people were crazy. Then you see how happy I be. I never seen anything like this. And it did not fit the religion that we grew up in. But thank you today we have understood. We are set free. To dance, to sing, to shout, to give God praise. Praise the Lord, this is the right place for you to be The right place for us to show our joy and our happiness to God. I'm going to continue teaching from Psalm 37. This is the third Sunday that we touched on this. Verses 1 through to 5. I have one of the four And this message has been titled to take possession of the land or to receive all the blessings that God has made possible for us. It is a fact that there are many blessings. I'm, I'm guessing that we haven't yet uh, reached even halfway of the blessings that God has in store for us. So this psalm reminds us two things And I believe it is very important for us. And that we should not neglect to notice these two things. Because if we do not pay attention, we will then miss out on the five things that the word does tell us to do. Tells us not to fret, do not stress ourselves. Because when we look at to the world we live in, they're full of sinful nature and evilness. And maybe sometimes we get angry and hurt and we start to blame And we say, God, why, why do you still bless these evildoers? I read the word to you, get it, you understand. They will not last. Hallelujah. The word says, do not stress yourself. For they will not last. Just like a flower grows up and then it withers in the sun. They are like that. Amen. Do not be jealous or envious towards people like that. Hallelujah. You take care and guard your heart. We spoke about five things that we need to trust in the Lord. Firstly, you need to trust in the Lord. So why should you trust in the Lord? Because God is a sure thing. Amen. There is no doubt found in God. The word has, is trustworthy, it has been tested. And church, we need to trust fully, wholeheartedly in this word. Because it is God's word 
And I love this truth and this fact about the word that God, he stands for his truth. He does according to his truth. He will keep his promise. Praise the Lord. Secondly, it tells us do good. We spoke about a lot of things in regards to doing good. Do not, do not get tired of doing good because you will reap in the right time. Us as a church, we are created to give life. If anyone is ill or sick or dying in this church, we are the ones who are It says to because when we share each other's burden, we help carry each other. Tells us to give and to share. Hallelujah. That you would plant the seed in the spirit and to reach out to enlarge your territory. Hallelujah. Remember, you're not just saved to stay outside. You are saved to reach out to the world. And we're also to help the church. Whatever we see, we need to help. And that brings out that life of it then tells us, take the life of the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. Take the life in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. Find your serenity in God. He will provide your desires. We need to make a the peace of our heart. And then he will give us the Hallelujah. Firstly, the word says to do good. Hallelujah. And then take your delight in God. It is an opportunity for us. Notice how God ties his promise behind that when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. The word does not promise, or God does not promise to us that He will. He will fulfill the desires of our flesh or our body. But that He will give you the desires of your heart. That our heart, our soul desires. What is it that's found in the hearts of good men? Is it not to know, to love, to live, to be pleasant Hallelujah. to God? You see, we love hearing that. Take the light of the Lord and you will give you the desires of your heart. You see, we like the second part of it, but we don't always like the first part to delight in the Lord. He delights in us when we are obedient to everything he has instructed. 
That we make him the person who leads. And we submit totally to God's guidance. And, and that's in everything we do. Hallelujah. To delight yourself in the Lord. It is not being scared or terrified. We are not being but it tells us to run to God. Don't run away from God. Hallelujah. To grow that desire, that, that first in Him. The psalmist wrote for us in 42. Like the deer panters after the water. That our soul too would first like that for God. My soul first for God, for the living God. Sometimes I wonder why the psalmist used the deer as an example here. <laughs> as the deer pants for streams of water. It puts the picture of a, a deer fleeing from the hunters. And when the, the deer what does he, he long for? Knowing that water is a source of life. Just as the deer pants or longs to reach the The psalmist writes for us. So should our souls care for God. Because God is the true source. There is absolutely nothing that can satisfy me. See, and then the psalmist says that we desire the psalmist writes, my soul first for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet him? It's the God who gives us that we too should first like that after God. I believe the time, the generation, this era we We should, as a church, do not find satisfaction in anything here. But that our delight is fulfilled when we meet God. Hallelujah. That we find joy in His presence. That we will taste Him, that we will try Him, that see He is Blessed is the one who takes refuge wow. in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you trust in God or not? Please don't use your time of prayer or reading the word become a time of burden as a time of wanting and joy. We remember the reference to Mary and Martha. Where Martha is busy with life. And she isn't choosing to be in the presence of Jesus to accept 
But should we ever get to a point where it work over When we should come to rest of God, for that is the time where we refresh. That's when we rest in the prison. We get filled up in those moments. We know that when we are so busy, 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 there's consequences to being busy. We get angry easy. And if he tries to come at us, we can't handle it. Church, it's very important that we take the time to sit in God's presence and have that fellowship with God. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm what do we want to be What do we want to be We seek after it. The psalmist tells us that we are like a sweet It is sweeter than honey. To Stand. 
the front. Church, I'm not standing here and sharing this so you can feel sorry. But I'm standing here to share the goodness and shine the glory of God. If you have yet to walk the path of war, just as Paul had done. I know that Paul that he gives me the glory and everything. Here I stand to testify for you. He is true God who will give you the satisfaction and the joy of peace for everything you face. Not something for us to run and hide. And we face problems and troubles. And God gives us enough and more than sufficient strength to stand. I do not encourage or with the choices my kids often make. But I stand together to love them, to help them. We have the opportunity to encourage them to repent and to turn. Fifthly, he tells us in his word to commit our ways to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. It is the core and the spirit of the church of prayer. You notice this morning there be two things that meet or connect and that loves to associate and to be together. That kind of yeah. will not continue without a commitment. Maybe we find joy in the times that we spend and praise God and reading and reading and fellowshiping as a church. But if we want that fellowship to continue to grow, we need discipline and I want to share this about Alexander the Great. In his last triumph, the scouts came and told him about a little town. And in order to win the battle, he needed to overcome this little city. Oh, no. 
the fortress of this little town, this city was very strong. It was fenced in with very strong material. And it was surrounded also by trees. But a thousand feet high trees. So Alexander the Great, he went there. With his men of around about a thousand as well. As they were getting closer to this town, he yelled out or proclaimed out to this town or to the king of this little town saying, you need to surrender. And from the top of the, the boundary of this king replies, Saying, no, our walls are very strong. And we have plenty of supplies and food inside to sustain any attack you make. So it tells that Alexander the Great no longer replied. But he just said to his guards or his soldiers, Oh, he signaled to his soldiers and instantly they made a formation. His second signal he gave them. They start to march towards the trenches. The first one went, fell down the second line. And all these lines of soldiers kept going and falling. And this last person, Alexander the Great, says, stop. He raised his hand to stop. But all he did, he didn't say anything. He looked up at this king who stood on the top of this wall. And this king, he came down from the top of the wall. And he came down and he surrendered. Inquiries were made to this king. Why did you surrender? And the king said, the reason I died, that I could accept or, or face or deal with For these soldiers, they were committed. They were totally 100% behind the course. See the commitment. See the the, or the submission of these soldiers for freedom. He just had to signal them and they went to death. How about us as a church? Are we followers that are set apart, that are totally sold out? Think about it today. What can be done against this kingdom of darkness and the soldiers of God and that God would help us that we would be soldiers with such a heart that we would be committed to God God has given the land He's presented it to us The promise of God still stands He told us Wherever we lay our feet That was ours A promise given to Joshua And a promise given to us in the church today. 
wherever you set your foot, wherever you stay, I give to you just as I promised to Moses. Amen. It's called commitment. So trust your, your path to God. Proverbs 16. God has called us to be true followers of Christ. If we want to truly be those followers of Christ, then we need a commitment. We need to be sanctified and be holy. I believe the teaching we've taken is an encouragement for us, church. To help us to remind us. So God has prepared great blessings for you, for your children, for your relatives, for everyone. Hallelujah. Do not fret or be stressed about oh, anything. Do not be jealous or envious. But trust in the Lord. Do good. 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 Do